travel to West Brom and Wigan take on Sunderland. But there's no doubt that one of the most eagerly awaited games is the late kickoff at Eastlands. Billed as the clash of the cash as arguably the richest club in the world, Manchester City, take on Chelsea. City's newfound fortunes are a billion miles away from their rather more modest past. Here's Damien Johnson. This is Main Road, which was Manchester City's much-loved ground for 80 years. Stewart. Running Houston. And scoring! Well, let's be honest, mostly, they've lived in United's shadow. Neville. It's in. Rooney, fire and inflection. But the traditional poor relations have left behind Main Road, their nouveau riche these days, and they're determined to splash the cash. This weekend, Chelsea, a new era for Manchester City. I mean, it, as, as a former player, do you get goosebumps about that? Well, you want to be competing against the best, Damon. It's as simple as that. You know, Chelsea are the best, or Man United are the best, or Liverpool are the best, or Arsenal are the best. We want to compete against the best, and it's as simple as that. You know, I want our supporters, uh, who've been the, the, the bedrock of the, of the club for so many years, I want our supporters to have a bit of uh, success, to enjoy that success. I mean, people keep telling me 1976, when I played, was the last time we won something. I get fed up with people telling me that, you know? It's nice for me, obviously, because I was involved in that game, but uh, it's about time we had something else, and I mean, something real and tangible for our supporters to, to enjoy. It's, and the, the new Middle East investors coming, it's, it's a bit like Christmas, really. You're looking forward and you're excited about it, but you don't know whether you're going to like the presents once they've been opened. I ain't got the blues no more, I said. City already have a stadium to rival that of United and Chelsea. But the events of the last couple of weeks are the equivalent of football's Big Bang. The new City owners' combined wealth makes their biggest rivals look like relative paupers. It gives the club massive spending power in the transfer market. This is United for Robinho. Beautiful from Robinho! Kid's a superstar, isn't he? We've got the squad as we stand now to, to improve on last year. Um, by January, obviously, we would look to improve the squad further. I haven't spoken to uh, Dr. Taxin and uh, the new people that are coming, the Abu Dhabi Consortium. From all my discussions with them, they view myself and my staff as an asset. Um, I'd, I'd have to agree. I was speaking to Dennis Stewart this morning. He's reminiscing about the last time City won a trophy back in 76. Do you feel that some silverware is within your grasp this season? It's a big ask. Um, obviously, we're... I think that there's been a lot of comparisons between where we are and maybe when when Chelsea were in a similar situation when uh, Mr Abramovich came in and, and put in a, lot, a huge amount of money with the in introduction of the money that we're going to receive. Uh, we're at a different stage than Chelsea. We want to get where we want to get very, very quickly, but um, I think there's a little bit of realism that has to be attached to, to what we're trying to do here. Inevitably, there are those who will say that this big influx of money is, is going to kill competition. I mean, is that something that concerns you? Or? Well, I think the Premier League is, is strong at the moment. I mean, it's not a two-horse race. It's four, five, six-horse race uh, every year. So uh, as, a, as a competition, it's still healthy. I think uh, the importance of, of the FA and the Premier League is, is that they, they make sure that the, the league does retain that competitiveness. The question is, what sort of quality uh, controls do we have on the, on the culture on the tradition and on the structure of the football club and do the new owners understand the basis of Manchester City? Um, obviously it will change, but you haven't got to be fighting to change. We've heard from the City legend, we've heard from the manager. I wonder what the hardcore fans make of the takeover. One minute City are struggling, then they get all this money, then then the assets are froze, then it's got another takeover bid. It all looks a little bit too big, good to be true for Man City because uh, we've not had much to cheer about, but it's, it's certainly looking good at the minute for the City fan. You know, we've got a British manager that's going to get the chance to, to use this money. Normally, you would, you would think money like that gets used for, like, Mourinho or Salari or, you know, or, or someone, you know, like that. But it's going to be nice to see a British manager get used to, to spending that kind of money. And let's, let's hope uh, the new chairman, you know, sticks to his word and lets Mark Hughes do the, the job. Lee, are you pinching yourself about City's <laughs> newfound riches? Fever pitch. Going mad in <laughs> Manchester and... Um, yeah, it's very exciting. Obviously, being a City fan, you you, you you can relate to how they're feeling, mm. and 
they've never had this before, so it's all new to him. And Dennis Stewart hit on a point about saying, I hope the, the integrity and, and the identity of the club can somehow remain untouched with, with all the money that's coming in. Um, that's, that'll be difficult. Mm. And um, there is a similarity to Chelsea, and um, the, the money that these people have got um, is untold. Um, I think they've got a good man in the job in, in Mark Hughes because he's very direct, he knows what he wants. They're obviously FA Youth Cup holders as well, yeah. so the academy's working. Everything's everything's working, they're just, now they need a bit of money. <laughs> They've got an awful lot of money. <laughs> Can they cope with that? It's, it's really exciting times, it really is. Will he, will he be allowed to build a team? I think that mm. would be my question for yeah. Mark Hughes. Mm. Yes, he's shown he's a good manager. You just worry if they lose a couple of games with having such fantastic sums of money, whether they think, well, hold on a minute, let's go and say, let's break Capello's contract at the FA or something. Yeah. That, that, would, that would always be a worry. If he's allowed to build the side, yeah. absolutely no, no problem what, about that whatsoever. I think they will have problems attracting the top players, though, mm. because, you know, you're still fighting well, against Chelsea. Champions League football, Well, exactly. Yeah. You're still fan you're fighting against Manchester United. I just hope the owners are realistic with Mark Hughes. I think that's the key. They got, they got Rubinho, but I'm not so sure he, think he knows yeah. he's signed there. <laughs> yeah, Lee, I was going to ask you, because he gave that Freudian slip when they when asked him what it's like yeah. signing, he said, I can't wait to be at Chelsea. And obviously yeah. he went to Man City. Yeah. I suppose the City fans will want to see some commitment from him, well, starting course, today. It's, all, it's re re results driven. The, you know, if you win games, all the pressure's off and players will come and play for you. If they lose a few games, as Mark said. Hmm. It'd be interesting today, I mean, with, with Chelsea, you know, they've now suddenly decided that Roman Abramovich is the poor relation. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right, OK. Everyone yeah. wants to be his mate, don't they? But <laughs> I, think, I think Chelsea's still the team to beat. And will they win today, do you think? Yes. Yeah, OK. No. No. <laughs> well, you would. Uh, West Ham have wasted little time in appointing a successor to Alan Kerbishley.